discussion we hope. All right, in our Kickstarter and our main discussion this morning, we are setting the pace for women in the economy, and given that our theme for Women's Day is investment in that direction. Now, of course, traditionally, mm -hmm. women have not fared as well as men in the workspace, with most women in the earning just three quarters of what their male counterparts make. In reality, that's not the only problem, that's just half the story. When you look at the last 20 years, more women have opted to start their own businesses rather than uh, before even outpacing men, and they have been thriving in that direction. There may be a few number, but they've been progressive nevertheless. The reality is that women can and should have a large presence in the business world, a pre precise uh, flavor when it comes to the women in empowerment and as far as the intent is concerned that also uh, should be a direction but also in democracy uh, the women should be continuously empowered and uh, thankful to our Ugandan government uh, there's been affirmative action that has affected perspectives and interaction and participation of uh, women actively in other elements of democracy now to put all this to bed in light of women's day that is taking place tomorrow being celebrated in Katakui district here in Uganda we do have Patricia Mun Nari Babi, her executive director for the Forum of Women in Democracy, also known as Forward Day, um, here to join me in this discussion, unwrap it and also wrap it up <laughs> at the same time. Uh, good morning to you, Patricia. Good morning. Uh, how are you today? Very good. And how are you? Good, thank you. Okay. Let's talk about uh, women in terms of empowerment. Mm -hmm. Over the course of uh, years, uh, ever since the UN actually instituted this day uh, that should be recognized globally amongst its member states mm. what have you recognized has been the milestones the achievements the change in perspective and trends of women and active participation so thank you very much and I'm glad to be here today to talk about uh, the 114th Women's Day this day began to be celebrated in uh, 1911 and it's really aimed at uh, you know bringing to the fore the issues that still pertain in regard to the achievement of gender equality and building collective advocacy and voice towards addressing the gaps that, uh, that do exist. The theme for this year is invest in women, accelerate progress. And this is indeed a really uh, uh, critical theme at this point in time because a lot has been achieved in terms of uh, bringing women onto the f into the fore out of the periphery and getting them into decision making spaces and changing their conditions in order for them to thrive but a lot more needs to be done and so with regard to your question we know that for example the whole issue around debate on women's rights began to be talked about mostly in 1979 after the convention on the elimination of discrimination against women was adopted uh, it is seen as the Bill of Rights for Women, and it gives a good foundation for the work and the conversations that have been going on around the importance of ensuring that women are seen as, as humans, uh, and, and of course embedded in the Universal Declaration for Human Rights, mm -hmm. which says all humans are born equal with dignity and rights. And so that gives us a good foundation. Now, as a country, as you mentioned, a lot has been achieved for the women. Uh, we have, for example, in leadership, we have uh, many women that have come into decision making because of affirmative action that is embedded in our constitution. And so we see, for example, currently we have 35% women uh, in parliament on the affirmative action seat. We have about 41% at the district level because of affirmative action. Uh, we know that uh, we have uh, uh, a female vice president, we have a female speaker, we have a female prime minister. Uh, at in cabinet, we have about 43% women uh, as full cabinet ministers and about 48% as uh, ministers of state. So in terms of numbers of women in decision making, we are not doing badly. We have hit the critical mass. But as I said, a lot needs to be done. Mm -hmm. If I take you further, for example, to look at uh, women at the lower levels, we have only three district chairpersons out of 146. Can you imagine? Wow. Only three. Um, when you go to the other sectors, 
look at government boards. We have only about 25% women, percent of women in uh, decision-making on boards. When you go to heads of parastatals, it's also about 25%. So that's why we say that, yes, a lot has been achieved, but much more needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Let us go, for example, to, to the area of education. Uh, we know that the government has indeed put in place a mechanism. We have universal primary education. We have universal secondary education. But when you look at the numbers, at entry, there is parity. But by the time you get to P7, many girls have dropped out. In fact, evidence shows that out of 10 girls that join primary, only three complete P7. And the same applies to the secondary level. Only about 34% of girls actually complete secondary education. So what does that then mean? That many girls are dropping out. This affects, of course, their future because education is foundational. Mm -hmm. Once you have an education, it gives you better opportunities in life and you thrive more as a girl and eventually as a woman. So that means much more needs to be done in terms of ensuring that girls actually stay in school. And it is issues to do with uh, early marriage, uh, child marriage, mm -hmm. issues around uh, menstrual health management. Uh, you know, girls drop out of school because they don't have simple things like sanitary towels uh, and so on. They don't have separate facilities in schools for girls and boys, so there is no privacy. And then, of course, there's the whole issue around social norms and practices. You know, many um, uh, rural communities, because of culture and tradition, yeah, would uh, rather marry off their girls than keep them in school. There's a, an African country, uh, of course, that had tabled a bill of, ag against, uh, you know, uh, female uh, uh, mutilation. Mm. Now, uh, the leaders uh, on the floor of parliament were against it because they were the argument was they'll be against the cultures that have for long actually exactly. Been appreciated by mm. their nation, is it? Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so actually, that is at the foundation of what we need to do to be able to achieve gender equality. Unless we deal with the negative social norms, practices, and attitudes that continue to keep girls and women at the periphery, we will have a long way to go. What if steps have been taken towards changing the mindset of peoples, especially in the African context, uh, as far as mm. their cultures and customs are concerned? So. A lot of work is actually going on. Maybe sometimes it's not in the limelight, but a lot of work is going on around raising awareness on the issue of rights because it starts from rights. You know, both men and women understanding that girls and, uh, that girls and women have equal rights mm -hmm. like the men do. Mm -hmm. So that is the foundation. We have also been doing quite a lot of work as an organization, but also many other organizations, you know, working with religious and cultural institutions because these are the gatekeepers of patriarchy yeah. and all these things that we see. So we are making inroads into working with, th with these institutions so that they can join us on the journey to achieving gender equality. We are doing a lot of work engaging men as champions of gender equality and enabling them to see that actually equality for women is a plus for all of us. It's a plus for society, mm -hmm. and that is very important. So a lot of work is going on around raising awareness. We are going into homes, for example, and the Forum for Women in Democracy, and using an approach where the whole family comes together and has discussions and conversations about gender equality, about women's rights, and the importance of working together for better families, for better communities, and for a better nation. Okay. So a lot of work is actually going I on. I like the fact that you have said it's an holistic and all-round engagement. It's not just the women in this room mm. and other people in the other room. Everyone must be on the yes. table mm. uh, to have this, uh, you know, the vision moving forward. Now, of course, this time round is focused on investing mm. in the women yes. equality. Mm. And that investment, can you break it down for us? Why that thing at such mm. a time as this when it looks on paper mm. as if there's been some good investment mm. in women? Yeah. So, so as I mentioned, a lot has been done. There has been investment in girls and women, but a lot more needs to be done. We are working towards an equal future for all. I mean, just look at the statistics that I've, I've just mentioned. There are a few, but they give a picture. They depict that much more needs to be done, and therefore it's important to invest in girls and women for them to achieve their full potential, but also so that it can contribute to national development and sustainable development. So for example, if we put more money into girls' education and ensure that they stay in school, in the long run, they will become more productive, 
They will get employed, whether they are self-employed or formally employed, and they'll contribute to national development. If you invest more in health, so that we have fewer women dying while giving birth, mm -hmm. fewer children dying uh, because of uh, owing to infant mortality, then it has a long-term effect that will benefit the country and so on. And at the Forum for Women in Democracy, because we realize the importance of this investment and because we know that you know, there's still much more to be done in order to achieve gender equality, we initiated an, an initiative called the Imara Women's Center. Mm -hmm. We are going to establish a center that will be a space to facilitate women's independent voice, that will be a space for reflection, rejuvenation, nurturing, healing, and self-care, that will provide a support base for women that are faced with sexual and gender-based violence. It will be an empowering space where we also spur activism for zero tolerance to to sexual and gender-based violence. It will be a place where we can facilitate networks and connections as we work together towards uh, a more gender equal world. Mm -hmm. And this day is significant for us today, the 7th, because on this day, we launched and broke ground for the Imara Women's Center in Kasangati. We have been fundraising and the future looks good. The center is going to be really important because it will anchor our work on gender equality. It will make a sustainable contribution to addressing some of the issues that I already talked about. You know, many of our organizations are donor dependent. The center provides the opportunity to generate our own resources that we can then inject into the work that we'd like to do. So seventh is very significant for us. Invest in her is significant for us as an organization mm -hmm. because we think that through the Imara Women's Center, we will be making an investment to ensure that we, we continue to work with and deal with the issues that I have already talked about and hopefully see more girls and women thriving and getting into the public sphere, into the private sphere and, co and contributing more and more to, to development. And so uh, as we celebrate Invest in Her, as I mentioned, we are fundraising to be able to raise resources for the Imara Women's Center. We will be having a dinner on the 15th of June this year. So I'm asking everyone to save the date so that they can come and be with us as we celebrate women and contribute to the establishment of the Women's Center. We will also be having a girls festival on the 7th of September. Again, save the date. This is a really important initiative. It will be the first of its kind in the East African region. And so we are calling on everyone to join us to invest in her so that we can accelerate progress. Okay, invest in her begs a very interesting question. Who should be investing in her? Everyone should invest in her. <laughs> it is government, it is parents, it is the, the education system, it is everyone. So we are calling on each and everyone to invest in her. I mean, if you think about investment in, uh, in women and girls, I've already talked about the other sectors. In the workplace, invest in mentoring, in supporting the women to be able to get into the workspace and thrive in that space. If you think about education, invest in her. Think about quality education. Provide sanitary towels, emergency, for the girl to be able to stay in school. Mm -hmm. Parents, invest in the girl child so that they are able to participate in, in the education system and also eventually you know, thrive as, as women later in life. Um, when you think about the corporate sector, invest in her so that women too can climb up the ladder in the, in, in, in the corporate sector. And, and I like the start where you began with businesses. Wow, Uganda is an entrepreneurial country, mm -hmm. but you know what? One in three businesses is owned by a woman. But when you go to the corporate, they're hardly there in corporate governance. Mm -hmm. So how can we support women to participate more in the corporate sphere and so on? Okay. So it is for everyone to actually invest in girls and women because at the end of the day, it has a ripple effect and a positive impact on development. Okay. In closing, what would you be as recommending as uh, either uh, strategies or mechanisms that can be ad adopted at different levels to be able to invest in our women? It's about, of course, resources. One thing I didn't mention is that we have a plethora of good laws that actually promote gender responsiveness. But the issue is resourcing those laws. 
And so implementation is not happening because these laws and, and policies are not well resourced. So government needs to invest more resources to ensure that you know the policies, the laws that we have are actually implemented. We also need to continue to do, do work around changing negative social norms, attitudes, and practices. You know, we have, we are, we live in a patriarchal setting. These things are deeply ingrained and it is across gender. It is both women and men. So we need to do much more in unraveling and dealing with these issues that continue to pertain and keep women at the periphery. Okay, all right, Patricia Munavi, uh, thank you so much. Uh, just 30 seconds, your message to the women for Women's Day. So as we celebrate Women's Day, I call upon all women and men to actually invest in girls and women because it has a benefit not only for families, but for communities and for the nation at large. So let us invest in her in order to accelerate progress and ensure sustainable and equitable development. All right, thank, thank you, you very so much. much.